Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, Season 5, Episode 13. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. Okay, so this episode starts out with Brittany and Key Rock. I said, oh man. I'm about tired of them, but I'm a, I'm a rock with it, okay? So, Key Rock informs his mom that he'd like to ask Brittany to marry him, and his mom is all for it. She absolutely loves Brittany and thinks that Brittany will be a great addition to their family. She likes Brittany so much that she gave him a family heirloom, which is a beautiful engagement ring that has been passed down through the family. She tells him that she was holding the ring for the first one of her sons to get engaged. So this is really a beautiful moment between him and his mom. And I really like his mom. She is really a beautiful person and her heart is so big. I love her. Now when Key Rock gets Brittany all dressed up cause they're going out to have a special date and you know, he's going to propose to her, but she doesn't know that when they get in the car and they start singing and rapping, I said, oh my gosh, they looked so cute. You know, I was in it with them. I'm laughing, I'm joking. I said, this is really cute. But, you know, on the inside, I think, girl, you really need to run and both of you really need some therapy. Anyway, she thinks that she's going to have a nice dinner and they're going to go horseback riding. No, ma'am. He's taking her to go skydiving. But while they're in the car, she starts talking a little bit about her father. And he brings up that he remembers her telling him that her father got jumped by seven dudes. And it turns out the seven dudes is black. Okay, so she didn't want to talk about it. She was really pissed off. But Key Rock was saying to her, listen, don't be mad about this. We can still have this conversation. Maybe that's part of the reason that your father doesn't like me. The fact that I'm trans, the fact that you're gay, and the fact that I'm black. And she didn't really seem like she wanted to face it, but... I think that's exactly what it is. All three of those things. You know, if he was jumped by seven black men, he might be feeling some kind of way about the black people. You know, by the black people, I'm talking about me. I'm black. Anyway, um, I don't think that Key Rock was trying to hurt her feelings or anything, but I think he was just speaking facts. And I think that that is true. Um, unfortunately, that happened to her father and her father needs to know, you know, not all black people are bad people. Not all black people would jump you, sir. So, you know, hopefully at some point she'll be able to bring her family back together and they'll realize that this is her life. You only have one life to live and who she's with should not stop you from your relationship with your daughter. Now, honey, when they get over here to this skydiving place, Brittany was completely shocked. One thing that I loved from this, I loved the playfulness that they had in the car. And I absolutely enjoyed him running outside to call her grandmother because he said he wanted the approval of at least somebody in her family. He calls her grandmother. He has been practicing his Spanish, which at some point he messed up a little bit. And he said, you despise Brittany, but that's not what he was trying to say. I laughed so hard. But you know what? He put a little work in and I thought he did a really good job trying to, you know, ask her in Spanish for Brittany's hand in marriage. And she said, yes. Now, I have said this before and I will say it again. I don't think that Brittany and Key Rock are right for each other. And I don't think that they're ready for marriage. I think there's so much growth and development that needs to happen before they are ready to be married and have a child. I think that Brittany has gone through so much pain and suffering. She's got so much trauma in her life that she needs to get some therapy over it. Key Rock has been through hell and he too needs some therapy. They are really moving too fast in my opinion, but my opinion doesn't matter. I did not like when Key Rock was trying to convince her that she should go skydiving to prove her love to him. Um, no, no, that is not how that works. Um, that would not work for me. No, um, uh, no, I am a on the ground kind of gal, you know, but 
she's gonna go for it she's gonna get up there and skydive to prove her love because she wants to get married and she kept saying over and over again are you gonna marry me are you gonna marry me listen I'm not here for it no um I think that her still being with him putting up with all the bullshits is proof that she loves him don't don't test me because you'll get your feelings hurt anyway I guess we'll just see what happens I'm wishing the best for both of them I just don't think it's gonna work out anyway moving on Melissa and Louie all right so Louie shows up at the bar and listen, I could be wrong, but I was pretty sure that when Louis walked into that bar to surprise her after he flew into town, it looked like she was flirting and holding hands with that man at the bar. Did it look like that to anybody else? The way that she treats him, I think that she has possibly met someone else or the thrill is absolutely gone. You know, she had this fantasy, Louie, 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 high school Louie. Oh my God, Louie was this, this, and this. You know, she's had the sex now and, you know, the teeth situation, the living with his mama. I think she realizes that, you know, that dream is over. You gotta sing it. You know, the fantasy is over. You know what I mean? That's what I think. I also think that she believes that she's too good for Louis and no ma'am at this point I'm thinking that he is too good for you. They end up going back to her place and did anybody notice that she threw that spaghetti in the pot without the water even boiling? I said well that's gonna be a minute. I mean my goodness. Then she pulls out the frozen meatballs and Louis says are those frozen meatballs? I said dude dude we have seen what your mama cooks okay and that looks disgusting you better take those frozen meatballs and go to hell on now could it used a little seasoning and some sauce yes because that pasta looked real pale anyway Melissa was being so negative and rude to him she was very discouraging condescending she was pretty much going off on this dude like she always does for no reason the man was in jail for over 10 years he just got out of jail I don't know why she expected that he was supposed to get a really good job like IBM was about to hire him like your local Chase Bank was gonna say come on in you can work as a personal banker where does she think this dude was getting work okay he is working at the pizza place 50 hours a week saving up money Louie leave her okay she is not it I did appreciate when he said do you even love me or is this some type of fantasy come true shit from high school I said all right Louie tell her like it is Louie listen the woman is a mess the woman is a mess you need to fly yourself home because she was talking about there was going to be a cookout at her sister's house the next day but she really didn't want to take him so he storms off to his his room because she put him in the guest room. I said, uh-huh. I think she's got somebody else. Anyway, Louie, listen. Fly back home to your mama. Save up your money. Move out of your mama's place. Put up some boundaries with your mama and block Melissa. Move on with your life, buddy. This is ridiculous. Eris and Cam. Oh, boy. I was happy to see them. Remember last season that they were on? I was surprised that Cam turned out to be a really nice dude. But, um, yeah, either the Wee TV people are scripting things or, you know, Cam's nuts. So, you know, that I mean, what in the hell is going on? So, Eris is jumbo pregnant. Okay, the woman is ginormous. She is in her last six weeks of pregnancy I said this woman should not be upstairs packing boxes and trying to get everything together for a move she needs to be somewhere sitting down with her feet up while he's downstairs while he's downstairs with her daughter playing video games I said I know you don't have time to play video games no sir not when this woman is upstairs packing so anyway they got to get out they are getting evicted because somebody has informed from the homeowners association that he is a felon and they said not in our neighborhood no sir mm -mm. you've got to go now see that's one reason why I don't have a homeowners association I made that my business to let my realtor know when I was searching for my home that I do not 
I repeat, I do not want to live in a neighborhood that has a HOA because you are not going to tell me what I can hang up outside my house. You are not going to tell me that I can't have orange curtains. By the way, I do not have orange curtains, but if I wanted them, I could put them up. You know why? Because this is my place and I don't have an HOA. HOAs put people out. Anyway, Cam says that he knows that she's very stressed out, but he's stressed out too. Uh, buddy, we don't give a shit. So, okay, we don't care about you being stressed out. She is creating a life in her body. You know, cut the crab. He's talking about his job as a customer service representative. He's out of jail for a little bit over a year. He's a step daddy. He's about to be a new daddy. He's a, you know, a husband. Boy, listen, I get it. That's called living. Just be happy that you wake up every morning and you've got this beautiful wife, new baby on the way and an adorable stepdaughter. Just be happy about that. Anyway, they're supposed to be out looking for somewhere to be. They don't have anywhere to be. Can you imagine the stress that you would have knowing that you are six weeks away from delivery and you could have that baby at any moment and you don't have a place to live? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not me. He says that they're going to go out looking and he pulls up to an RV park. I said, a, a RV park? What the shit he is looking at huge rvs that are up in the six figures i said oh no you cannot afford that you need the rv that uncle eddie was driving in the christmas vacation <laughs> you cannot afford this rv i'm ready to pop him as soon as they pull up to that r i said what the shit He's talking about his rap career and how he loves touring. He missed touring. He's going to be touring. I to touring? You opening for somebody? What is happening here? Who is, who is going to see this dude? Where exactly are you going to be showing at? I mean, uh, no, no, no. Sir, I like you, but no. <laughs> Sir. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Nobody is coming to see you. You do not need to. Good God Almighty. Mm -mm -mm. I, I can't. I can't. I don't want to hear anything else about that rap career. Listen, listen, Cam. What needs to happen is you need to continue working as a customer service representative. And y'all need to get back in that car, get over to your local apartment complex and put in an application for a nice three bedroom apartment. That's what y'all need to do. This is ridiculous. Y'all cannot live and travel in that RV. Both of you have to work. Now, if your customer service job allows you to work from your RV home, travel America working for the RV, see if I give a shit. But you also have a child who has to go to school. Are you going to have her learning online? Like what the hell is going on here? This is one of the most ridiculous ideas. I don't think that he should be allowed to play in this woman's face. Like this is crazy. A tour bus, a tour RV in your rap career. Sir, it's too hot for all this. The woman is in her third trimester. She is hot. It's sunny Florida. Stop playing with this woman. You cannot have a wife, a newborn baby, and a teenager living in this RV. Even Lena, she's like 10 or 11 years old. She says Cam always comes up with bad ideas. Cam, you cannot let your 10 and 11 year old stepdaughter outsmart you, buddy. Am I understand that being a rapper is your dream, but sometimes you have to put your dreams on hold a little bit to focus on what's right in front of you. And you know, no, no, no. And why in the hell would you want to buy a $267,000 RV when you could just go buy a $267,000 home. It's, it's given stupid. Okay, moving on. Joy in red, Lord. 
We TV people, we did not ask for this, okay? Please stop messing with us. Anyway, oh my goodness, they are still on this road trip from hell. I wish they would hurry up and get back to New Mexico. I'm sick of this shit. Anyway, they're on this road trip and she's asking him if there's anything that he would change about her. You know, he's been out for five days now and he tells her he would change her insecurities. I said, oh, that ain't never going to change. Especially when you're out here sleeping with dead bestie Julie. This is not going to work. Okay. You are always going to be pressing on this woman's insecurities or until she wises up and drops your ass. Anyway, anyway. They end up staying at this wagon motel. I would like to know, does the wagon motel have a bathroom? I just, you know, a little refrigerator, a little kitchenette. I don't know. Anyway, the little wagon motel, it looked kind of cute, didn't it? I could do that for one night. Or one of those wigwam hotels, you know, the TP kind of thing. I could do that. Man, giving me vacation ideas. Anyway, She's in the uh, wagon talking to her sister. Oh, me and Red are here. We're going to go to the big truck stop or the big trucking or big Texan or something later. And then we're going to get in the car and continue this trip. I want to know who's paying for this. Who is paying for this? We saw you get $500 at the pawn shop for your family heirlooms. You don't have any money. Is we TV paying for the wagon hotel at the, you know, the big Texan or big trucking or whatever it was. He, on the other hand, is supposed to be getting some breakfast, looking for some coffee. You know, she must have handed him a few bucks. Anyway, he gets on the phone. He calls dead bestie Julie. I said, you know what? I can't stand you. Not even a tiny bit. He's out there. Oh, I'm out here. You know, I'm on my way. I'm doing it. We gonna make it to New Mexico. I hope you're happy for me, bestie. Boy, get the hell out of here. Now this dude goes into the gift shop. Yes, at the big Texan, a big trucking or whatever. He goes into the gift shop and he spends $32 on a ring. Yes, you heard that right. $32 on a ring. $32 of her money, I'm sure. Then right smack dab in the middle of the big trucking. Or big Texan. I don't know. <laughs> Dear God, I should have wrote that down. Anyway, he gets down on one knee in the middle of this dive bar with six people in there. And asks this woman to marry him. Oh my God goodness she says yes and they start kissing and I got disgusted I, I I just don't love it I don't red is making a fool out of this woman you just got down on one knee and proposed to this woman after you just slept with dead bestie two days ago now listen I am not whining or complaining or making fun of the $32 ring because for real, if it's, if the love is really real and $32 is all you can do me as a person, I would accept the ring and we could just, you know, work on it. We can build from there. I am not materialistic in any way, but you know, yuck, you are such a nasty person, Red. You know, he's using all of that lingo that he learned in prison and he's putting it on her with it. She believes everything he says and he's only making things worse for him because as soon as she finds out about dead bestie Julie, which I don't know why he thinks that she doesn't watch TV. Like it, it's on beyond. It was on. We saw it. She was going to find out sooner or later. Not only did he sleep with bestie Julie a couple days ago, but he called her right before he proposed. I would like to know, is she sleeping with him raw? Because did he sleep raw with dead bestie Julie? Because I know he, he don't, he don't have no money. I know he didn't come out of the prison with condoms. I'm disgusted. Anyway, y'all, they engaged. Ugh. moving on. Chevelle and Quaylen. Damn, damn, damn. I didn't want them back. Okay, I didn't want it back. I didn't need it back. Chevelle is back and she is back with those terrible outfits and bad wig. Now listen, I have zero fashion sense and I have said that a million times. I don't know anything about hair weave because I don't wear it. 
listen, what I do know is what I like and what I don't like. I don't like anything that Chevelle has ever worn on TV. Not this season, not next season, not season 38, not her original season. This woman cannot dress to save her damn life. And her wigs, ma'am, those wigs look plastic. They are pulled back too far. They look like they were $2. Listen, Chevelle, please stop this. Please. You are now on a cast with Eris. I have seen you on live with Brittany. They both wear really good wigs. Please get on the line with one of them and have them help you find a real wig, a good one. You know, you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of them, but just get one good wig. And damn it, when you pick up your wig, get your mama one. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm over the wigs, I think. Damn, moving on. So listen, her and Quaylen is getting married. Now listen, Quaylen, please grow your hair back out and go back to the locks. This mushroom situation on your head is not, I hate it. Oh my God, I can't stand it. I kept staring at it like, what is happening? Oh gosh, anyway, she's at the flower shop with her friend and that dress, good God, who makes that? Oh, it's her, her dress, her synthetic nightmarish wig. Oh, I can't. Anyway, she was telling her friend that they are good now. They are back together. They are solid. They are engaged. They are getting married. However, there's family drama on both sides. Both family sides do not like each other. I said, girl, do yourself a favor. Do us a favor. Just elope. Anyway. Chevelle ends up meeting up with her mom to go to this wedding venue and I don't understand it, but it looked like Chevelle and her mama was wearing the same dress. I said, well, what, what, what? Why in Sam hell are you and your mama both wearing matching dresses and matching bad wigs? Them wigs was both bad. They, they ridiculous. Her mama cannot stand Quaylen. Quaylen's mama. She does not want her to marry Quaylen. She is trying to convince her that this is not a good idea. And the same thing with Quaylen's mom. Quaylen's mom is not here for the shit. She does not like Chevelle. She doesn't like Chevelle's mom. She does not want them getting married. I said, Lord, how mercy. These people are grown adults. Maybe they belong together. Maybe they don't belong together. But as parents, sometimes we have to take a step back. We go ahead, we give our children advice, we tell them how we feel, but then you got to pull back a little bit and allow them to make their mistakes grow and learn. And I think that that's what these two moms are going to have to do. However, you know, they weren't able to do that. They are screaming and yelling at each other in this public place. Then we find out that this venue is $25,000. I said, oh, hell no. I know with that wig, there is no way in hell that you can afford $25,000. Elope. I'm just saying they need to be down at your local VFW. This is ridiculous. Chevelle tells her mom, well, you don't have to marry him. I'm marrying him. And her mom said, and I don't have to like him either. I mean, good God, these two ladies grown as hell, fussing and arguing in a public place. Whew. I'm telling you, this season is going to be ridiculous. I'm tired of them already. Quaylen and Chevelle are not good TV, in my opinion. Anyway, moving on. Taylor and Chance. Honey, listen. If you are online at all, you already know that Taylor and Chance are not together anymore. They have broken up. They have been fussing, fighting, and acting a fool on social media. He swears that she was cheating on him with her ex. He lives with some other lady. Then at one point, he said that he was homeless. I don't know what the hell is going on. I just know that neither one of them have any money. And she has started a OnlyFans account. And she says that she's making some decent money on the OnlyFans. Now... I seen all that with them arguing with each other on social media, but I'm still going to say alleged because I don't know these people. Anyway, 
We start off, Taylor has decided to start her own business. She says that she saw a video of people making epoxy tables. So she's decided that she's going to make them too. I said, well, shit. Anyway, this idiot Chance is trying to piggyback off of her business and try to jump in and do some construction business off the back of her work. I said, oh, hell no. We saw what you did to Bobby's little area. Stop telling people that you know how to do carpentry work. Stop it. You are lying. We have seen that. What you create is a fire hazard. I'm sick of the shit, Chad. Stop lying to yourself and us. So they end up going over to one of her customer's houses. They're talking to her about this table. This dude comes in asking the lady all these damn questions then he asked her, can he look at her kitchen? All of a sudden, he says, oh, we can get all this spoofed up and fixed up. I said, well, first of all, you're insulting this woman, talking about you can switch up and fix up her place, asking to fix her cabinets or drywalling or some shit. Taylor said, please stop. It's not about that. He gets a little attitude and runs outside. He is an embarrassment. If I was that lady, I would have put him and Taylor the hell up out of my house and I would have got my epoxy table from somebody else like Amazon. Anyway, Chance ends up going outside and gets a call from Bobbo. Okay, Bobbo. That can't be his government name. Anyway, Bobbo just got out of prison and Bobbo says that Chance been playing him. He want his money. That's what Bobbo said. Now, now listen, when Chance answered the phone and he heard Bobbo's voice, he said, who is this? Bobbo said, don't play with me. And I'm paraphrasing. Bobbo said, where's my money? Hey, bitch better have my money. Listen, Bobbo was not here to play with. Bobbo told him that he needs to give him a thousand dollars or he going to whoop his ass. He told that man that he was not going to send somebody by there. He was coming. He out now. Chance trying to say that. When you're in prison, your word is your bond. And he meant to pay Bobbo back. But when he got out of prison, he was spending so much time with Taylor and the kids and enjoying himself, he forgot. Mm -hmm. Well, Bobbo didn't. All right. Bobbo told him, run me my money. Now, listen, honey. Mm -mm. First of all, ta uh, Taylor, when you are handling business, don't bring chance. Okay, get in your own damn car and handle your business. Now, Chance didn't tell Taylor about Bobbo, but no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. There is no way in hell that I would allow him to bring me and my children down. You were so much better off before you met him. You had a good job. You had your sister and you had three kids. Now you are sitting there with four kids is it four or three? Does she have two girls and now a son? Or does she have three girls and a son? I think she has three girls and her son. Now you have four kids, an OnlyFans account, a piece of shit baby daddy, and Bobbo on your back. This is not all right. I'm glad she broke up with him and she's doing her own thing now. And did anybody notice that Chance was doing a lot of sniffing? There was a lot of sniffling going on. I said, oh my God, is he on that stuff? I think he might be on that stuff. I don't know. Bobbo told him, he said, I spared you. And I spared you. And I spared you. I'm unsparing you. I'm like, well, what the hell is a unsparing? <laughs> I mean, shit, Bobbo. Anyway, all I know is I would not want Bobbo coming for me. Chance, you better find a way to power wash the hell out of the neighborhood so you can get that thousand dollars because Bobbo is coming. And he said he's not sending nobody. He's coming himself. Listen, Chance looked scared as hell, didn't he? Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.